out here with Gus. I made a video with Gus yesterday. Gus is a new board and train we have in. This is day two, um, and we're gonna be working on some leash walking stuff with him. Gus is here for some human aggression issues that's mostly like stem from fear, so he's really not the most confident dog in the world, but he really struggles with taking direction, which is why he's gotten himself into so much trouble in the past. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be teaching him, or I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get your dog following behind you on a leash, whether you have a fearful and secure dog, a confident pushy dog, whatever kind of dog it may be, utilizing a remote collar, and then utilizing a drill that I've created using the cracks in the sidewalk here. So the idea here is we're gonna be using the cracks going along in the sidewalk here to give us a very, very clear resemblance of where the dog is supposed to be. So if I stop with my heels on the crack, just like that, I need the dog to be behind that crack, not on or over it. And we're gonna be using the e-collar to enforce that boundary. So if you think of this crack like an electric fence, on or over it is not allowed right now. We need him staying behind us and nice and attentive. This is a little bit different than a standard heel position. I don't so much care about left-hand side versus right-hand side versus right behind me. I don't care if he's lagging a little bit behind. Actually, I encourage uh, the dog to be a little bit further behind here because it's gonna be much easier for them to see where we're at. It's a different frame of mind. This isn't about a position, it's about a state of mind of the dog following us. So again, before we get this started, we need to make sure that our picture is crystal clear for the dog. So remember, heels on the crack, right? Just like that. I don't want toes on the crack. I don't want center of the foot on the crack. I don't want heels over the crack. I want the heels on the crack there, just like that. Keep your picture consistent. And then every time I come to a stop, if he steps on or over that crack, I'm gonna mark with a no, and then I'm gonna tap the e-collar right after. I'm using a mini educator e-collar right now. Uh, he works all over the place level-wise. The level's gonna change based on the dog here. So the first step here is we need to make sure he's gonna stop consistently behind the line, stopping every single crack here, right? This is, you know, kind of the yard work of it, right? We need to make sure that we're getting it really clear and showing him clearly each time I come to a stop, stay back. Each time I come to a stop, stay back. Um, couple other points, the crack is not for the dog, it's for me. Remember, we have to be as clear as we can with the dog. He's not seeing this line on the ground here, right? This is for me to know for sure if the dog is in the correct position or not, and it gives me a 100% crystal clear way to enforce it. So we're gonna stop every single crack here. From there, we're gonna do every two, every three, so on, so on. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Come. So first stop, he's behind the line there, perfect. Same deal, behind the line. He's a little bit distracted here, but that's okay. He's still making an effort to stay attentive with me. He's giving me a little bit of eye contact, which is fantastic. Now again, we've done one session of this already with him. I did a session with him yesterday, and this is how fast the dog tends to pick this up, right? One session, and he's already fairly in the groove of it here. So we're gonna keep repeating this, but we may be able to cruise through this process a little bit faster. No. So he stepped on the crack there. I marked with a no. I gave a tap on the e-collar there. So again, stopping every single crack right now, making sure he stays nice and in the groove of things. Now this is an additional distraction he isn't used to, obviously having somebody with a camera in front of him. As a dog that's insecure of things and has learned to act aggressively towards those things, this is a big distraction. You can tell his attention is still in that direction, but again, part of his brain is still staying attentive of me right now. And notice as we do this more, he's actually staying further back. He's having a better time understanding that I am gonna be stopping frequently. So instead of getting caught off guard being too close to me, he's leaving a little bit of assured clear distance here. So one more. Perfect. So next we're gonna transition to doing every two cracks instead of every one. So skipping one, coming to a stop, heels on the crack, making sure he stops in position. Skipping one, coming to a stop, perfect. Again, skipping one, coming to a stop. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm making sure I'm staying as loose on the leash as I can here. I want him consciously making the decision to stay in this position, not because I'm holding him back, not because all this leash pressure is happening right now, but because he's learning that following me is an appropriate means of where he should be, right? The leash is where we see people get caught up all the time with this. The leash becomes a restraint, it holds them back, it builds frustration. So I don't want him feeling this very often. I want him just getting into the swing of just moving around with me. So we're gonna keep doing this come loose on the leash coming to a stop perfect close but he's still doing a good job walking 
perfect. And same concept, just like when we were doing one, he's starting to stay even a little bit further back here. So we're gonna keep doing this a little bit more. Good. Skipping one, coming to a stop. Skipping one, coming to a stop. Still doing very good here. And we're just trying to get the repetitions in right now, right? Perfect. Beautiful. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition to every three. And I wanna be able to make it all the way to four before I start actually taking the dog for a formal walk. So remember, this is the yard work right now. This is the repetitions we need to get in so he understands the drill so that when we go to incorporate this into the actual walk, it's far easier for him. One, two, three, no. Stepped over, gave the correction for it. Now, the quicker you're moving, the more natural pace is, and the more he feels like we're just like kind of going along, the harder this is gonna get for him, which is why this drill is so important. Also notice when I'm coming to that stop, I'm not like slowing into it and giving him a second to kind of, you know, process that we're about to stop here. I'm just stopping, right? I need him leaving a sure, clear distance where every time he's ready to stop on a dime for me. So we're gonna go again. One, two, three. No. Same deal. A little bit better that time, but still has his foot on the crack. So I need him leaving just a little bit more space here. So we're going again. One, two. Perfect. Good. We'll do a couple more. One, two. No. One, two, good, one, two, excellent, and again, additional distraction of camera right in his face. For some dogs, that can be really weird, especially a timid dog like him, and even though he's insecure about this, this is a prime situation where he normally would be reacting, but he's not doing so because I'm asking him to keep 50% of his brain tuned in with me. So I'm communicating with him when he should be worried about something, when he should act on something on that impulse. So we're gonna do a little bit more of this. Same deal. One, two, three. Good. All right, we'll turn around. Same deal. One, two, three. Good. One, two, no. One, two, perfect. One, two, one, two, good. One, Two. Good. Now the other thing I'm making sure to do, especially as we're getting kind of, you know, quicker with this, more, you know, rapid with this, is I'm making sure he comes to a complete stop before I start moving again. So if you come to a stop and he's still kind of inching or moving, take your time. Remember, quality of repetition versus quantity of repetition. We want to make sure that he's understanding he needs to stay still in that position right there. So we're going to turn and we're going to start doing every four now. sunny out again. We get back in the shade here. You ready? Same deal. One, two, three, four. Perfect. One, two, three, four. Making sure he comes to a complete stop. And then one, two, Three, four, good. One, two, three, four. 
Now, once you're doing four, you're almost at a place at that point where you're actually walking. So the final step of this would be, we're just gonna start walking with him and we're gonna see how far we could get without him getting out of position, right? So we're just gonna keep cruising and if I start to notice him getting out of position or getting ahead, we're gonna do the same deal, a quick stop to see if we can catch him off guard. And I'm not worried about how many cracks at this point. I'm just walking, casually walking, and he's staying behind me, which is good. And what we should see in a minute here, this will probably start to get distracted by something. And like I said, I'm gonna do a quick stop and see if he's still staying in tune enough or if he's getting out of position. So same deal, a little distracted by some people over there. That's fine, I'll do a quick stop. No. So too distracted, I did a quick stop. I was able to catch him and I was able to get him corrected and back in tune with me. So we're gonna keep walking again. He's over it. He's like, fuck this. All right. No. still doing a really good job of maintaining focus here. Now again, with a new dog like him, this is only session two of doing this. He's doing fantastic so far, but you can tell he's still gonna need a little bit more fine tuning in different areas. I'm still gonna need to spend the time working on this drill with him in different situations. I need to make sure ultimately that he's generalizing this amongst different places. We haven't even gotten to tackling distractions yet with him, though this is gonna help significantly because I have him in more balanced of a state of mind. I still need to make sure I'm working this in new places with him and I'm still practicing when I go out on my walks just like I would a training drill. So when I'm walking, I'm not just going for walks with him right now, right? I'm looking for opportunities to work on this drill. I'm looking for opportunities to get him tuned in with me. And what you should see is after just a couple of sessions, it gets really, really good. So he's doing fantastic so far. Um, this is the first step of how you would go about kind of introducing this into the walk and introducing the e-collar with it and ultimately getting him a little bit more tuned in with you. Um, again, this is Gus doing a fantastic job. If you have any questions, hit it up below.